Hello, hockey fans. Thanks for tuning in to the latest edition of Coffee with a Coach. Nick Zerbinski this week, happy to sit down with Cornell women's hockey head coach, Doug Dara. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Nick. Looking forward to it. Got my coffee. I do have to admit this is my second one this morning, but we're on one. We're, we, we've got our coffee in hand and we've had every coach, even even Coach Pecknell I talked to two weeks ago, he said, I don't drink coffee, I drink tea, but there's always something in the cup in the morning to get you going. So yeah, this is my second cup too. <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. So Doug, the coach of Cornell women's ice hockey, obviously very successful run that you've been on. Um, but also being an alum adds another wrinkle to it and having a little bit more of that buy-in and that passion for the school and the community that you're a part of. We'll get into that a little bit later. First, just your journey, you know, getting to Cornell as a student and, and getting your degree there. And then now being there since 05 as the head coach, what is, you know, what has that been like to get to that point and to where you are now? Yeah, as a, uh, as a player, I played in the uh, Central Junior Hockey League in Ontario uh, for the Hawkesbury Hawks and got recruited uh, by a number of schools. Obviously, chose uh, Cornell, and, and I'd say based on a number of things, but I guess in particular the education and, and the combination of that education with the hockey program. Um, played at Cornell from 87 to 91 and then played professionally in Europe for 13 years after that. Um, Came back home uh, with my wife and three children. Um, my wife was going to teacher's college for one year and uh, I had to find a job. And so uh, worked in worked for a company called MDS in nuclear medicine. Um, <laughs> and uh, then got a call from Cornell. Um, I had applied uh, to the women's hockey job four years earlier, um, but didn't get a call. <laughs> and then uh, they called me and said um, they were looking for a coach on an interim basis, so I was just supposed to come in for one year. Um, and was fortunate, really, because a lot of coaches with a lot of experience didn't really look at the job because it was only supposed to be interim for one year. And um, came in for the one year, and here I am now, 16 years later. So, <laughs> I'm going to um, say, not not exactly interim. <laughs> <laughs> Well, obviously, coming with that and and the longevity is is built by success. And your team and your program has been so successful. You know, even you know, while I was a student at Quinnipiac in 2012, and then remember, all Cornell's coming in. This is going to be this is going to be tough because this team's always good and just always being built to be successful at the end of the year. Even in a year during COVID when the tournament was canceled, you know. You guys, I'm sure I don't remind you, but being the number one seed, right? Like that's, you're always in a position where you're successful. How have you been able to maintain that throughout the years as players come and go, coaches come and go? What is the core at Cornell that has keeping you relevant? I, I just think we're very fortunate here at, at Cornell. Uh, I think it's two things. One, Ivy League school, uh, considered, you know, one of the, top academic schools in, in the United States and in the world for that matter. Um, and then secondly, you combine that at a place where hockey is the most popular sport. And, and so to have that, that combination of the academics and the hockey program, um, it, it pretty much sells itself. And of course the location is, you know, beautiful town, beautiful school. Um, you know, you can study basically it was, formed under the premise of any person, any study. So there's over 4,000 courses you can choose from here. So no matter what somebody is looking to study, you know, nine times out of 10, it's available for them here. So, so I, you know, quite honestly, it makes my job really easy. Um, you know, the, the hockey tradition and the hockey program, uh, combining that with Ivy League education, it, uh, I really don't have to do a whole lot to sell it. And obviously, as much as you can, you can be humble and say you don't have to do a lot to sell it. You also, if you go through your accomplishments and your achievements, you know, five-time ECAC Coach of the Year, three A HCA National Coach of the Year, a USCHO Coach of the Year, and the team four ECAC tournaments, seven Ivy League championships. That has to be a huge selling point: is the success of coming in and being the next player that goes down that list of names that we could list off of, you know, putting on that uniform and being able to to continue that tradition. How important have you seen that in, in the locker room is that tradition and the culture of, you know, we know the players that have come through this program. You can be the next one. 
Yeah, you know, you, you start off with the coaching accomplishments, but let's face it, uh, that's not going to happen without, you know, having strong, talented, committed hockey players to be able to go out. They're the ones that have to go out in the ice and, and perform. And so, um, again, just very fortunate to have had a lot of the top hockey players and, and students in the world uh, come through our door. And I think not only is it the talent and, you know, what they do on the ice, but for our young players, you know, you come in and you see a, a Brianne Jenner, a Rebecca Johnson, a Micah Zandi Hart, a, you know, Laura Fortino, all these, you know, can go through a large number of them there. The thing about them is that they were also the hardest working players on our team too. So when you come in as a young player and you see a Brianne Jenner or a Kristen O'Neill or whatever, as a junior and a senior, you know, and all the accomplishments that they already have of playing in the Olympics and the world championships, but they're also the ones that are working harder than everybody else in the room. You know, you can't come in as a young player and just think, oh, well, I can, you know, come in and, and do whatever I want. You learn from them, you see them on a day in day out basis, and that helps to perpetuate that culture um, again, which makes it easy for us as coaches. I know you mentioned, you know, you talk about the players and and seeing who's working the hardest and those best players working harder. And we talked to Gillis Frechette on Inside ECAC Hockey last week, and she mentioned similar. She's basically said when, you know, coming in and seeing the older players being the ones that were pushing and always being the ones that were doing the work. And now she's obviously had the success that she's had. And that translates off the ice as well, right? You talked about the courses and you talked about what else you can do outside of hockey. How much do you preach that well-rounded approach of, you know, you're here for to build your life, right? And not just those four years of hockey. I know that it's something that you preach, but what is that message even to players that are not yours, right? That might be coming in or that are just that nine-year-old player that's going to watch this for some reason, watch you and I talk, but to come through the ranks and, you know, you're doing this for, for life. Yeah, I always say to people, like, you know, try to find things that you're passionate about and you're not always going to know right away. Um, but if you can find those things that you're passionate about and make a career out of it, um, you know, that's going to go a, a long way to a lot of your happiness in your life, I guess. I, you know, it's part of it anyway. I shouldn't say it's going to go a long way to your happiness in your life. But and so it's really important. And I think this gets lost a lot in the recruiting process. We, you know, we put such an emphasis on the hockey side of things, but especially on the women's side, you know, I hope that there becomes more and more opportunities for them to play professional hockey and be able to make a living at it. But as of right now, there's not, not a whole lot of opportunity there yet, but it's been growing, which is, is awesome. Um, so, but it's really important that you're studying something that you're interested in. You're studying something that you're passionate about. Uh, you're looking to work towards a career that you think you'd be interested in doing for the rest of your life. And it may not, you know, you may not know. It may not happen right away. A lot of times you're going to come out and, you know, work different jobs and, and, and figure it out. But trying to put yourself in the best position to be competitive, to be able to, to do that. And, you know, we talk a lot about the hockey side of things, but the reality is for, you know, the women in, in college is you're going to come out, you're 23, 24, 25 years of age, and you're going to have the rest of your life ahead of you. And, you know, that could be an awful long time. So trying to find a profession that, you know, you're interested in and that you'd like to be involved in is, is, is huge. And shifting gears a little bit, as we talked about, you know, your success as a program and, and the longevity, you more than a lot of people have been able to see the league you know, in some ways catch up to where you are, but it, but a lot of teams being able to rise to the top, right? And now you could be, we have teams that are six, seven, eight in the preseason coaches poll that are ranked in the top 12 in the country. What is this league like day in and day out? And, you know, speaking from experience, right? Last weekend, you played two top 10 teams back to back in league games. Yeah, it's it's hard for me to believe I'm one of the... Uh the old guys in the uh, coaching ranks now. And uh, it seems like just yesterday I was just joining the ECAC, but uh, the time has flown by, but yeah, it, it's incredible this year. I actually was on the recruiting trail this summer and, and met a coach from another league. And he said to me, man, I wouldn't want to be in the ECAC this year. It is competitive as can be. And so 
uh, it's great. It's great for women's hockey. It's great for the players. You know, every single night you've got to go out and, and be ready and compete because you're going to get beat if you're not. And so uh, it makes each and every weekend exciting. It makes the games exciting for the fans. Um, makes it exciting for the players. It makes it tough for the coaches because uh, we know that uh, we've we've got to be on our best uh, to have success, and we've got to be consistent to have success. But it is uh, it's really great for the league. It's great for women's hockey, and um, yeah, we've got yeah. It, it doesn't matter which team you're playing in the league. You're you've got to be ready each and every night, which uh, is really exciting uh, overall, um, and makes it tough for for everyone. And, and on the coaching side of things, you just said something that stood out to me is, you know, you need to be consistent and be ready every night. Obviously, with any level and any player, that won't happen every night. The goal is that it does. But to have every player be consistent on the same night is is hard. But what happens as a coach on the nights, especially in a league like this, where you do show up and your team is ready to go and you get beat by a better team or you get beat by a team that maybe isn't better and you just don't have the breaks? How do you continue to pull your momentum and make your players realize, hey, we did our job, we showed up, we were prepared, we just didn't get the result? Because I know as a coach myself and other coaches, you struggle with that, right? You're like, man, we did everything right, and now they're down, and they think they have to change, but we actually – we were okay. Yeah, it's all in where you put your emphasis, right? It's not emphasizing the result, you know, even in uh, our first game, you know, which was uh, – challenging and we didn't win but there was a lot of positives that that came out of that um being our first game we knew there was going to be a number of uh, mistakes and it's going to take time um the key is to be progressing in the right direction and continuing to put in the commitment and work that it, it takes to get better over the course of a season and you know it's it's tough because there's not many games and every game is so important um but you know and there are going to be those nights like you said where your team's going to play well and and not come out on top and it's just making sure that you're emphasizing the right things with your players and and showing them that hey we're, we're doing this well we're doing this well here's where we need to get better here's where we need to improve and they've got to put in the effort to improve in both the things that we're we're good at but but especially in the areas where where we're struggling um and you know if you've got a group that's committed to doing that week in week out um, by the end of the year you should be pretty strong and, and cohesive and and that'll give you a chance in the playoffs good notes for sure for coaches all around so i'll leave you with with one more and it's the question that we ask at the end of each call is how do you take your coffee <laughs> it's black <laughs> straight up black so yeah yeah but, most uh, coaches have an answer with anything besides that no one wants to water it down <laughs> and i and i uh, and i'm not a uh, coffee connoisseur by any means so you know i i'll drink it right out of the hotel room uh Keurig, whatever it is it, uh, it really doesn't matter um, yeah so it's if more. i ask you medium roast dark roast you say coffee <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i wouldn't know the difference to be honest if you could give me whatever and I, yeah so as long as it does the job that's good to know <laughs> so i just drink too much yeah. of it it's uh it's become a bad <laughs> habit of mine <laughs> <laughs> there's worse habits to have i'm sure at least it's productive <laughs> <laughs> well coach we appreciate your time and thank you for joining us and thank you to everyone who's listening and you know it's our fourth one and hopefully we continue this for a long time i know getting some insight from some of the best coaches you know in the game is, is really great and selfishly for me i enjoy every one of them cornell women's hockey takes on st lawrence and clarkson at home at lina this weekend both games can be seen on espn plus along with every other ecac hockey home game on the men's and the women's doug thank you for joining us thanks nick appreciate it